welcome to the cell culture technology. So, we have finished the course, but there are a couple of small modules of 15 to 20 minutes, which I wish to share with you people, which are as of now not part of the regular textbook of cell culture technology, but I believe that in future, these will be the technologies which will matter the most. So, to start off with, if you guys remember that at a certain point halfway through the course, we started talking about neuronal cell culture and we talked extensively about hippocampus and how to culture adult hippocampus, how to culture fetal hippocampus and in that process, we have talked about the challenges of culturing them, the challenges of regaining their electrical activity, how to use glutamate and other neurotransmitters to regain their electrical activity, their action potentials and so on and so forth. So, in the same context, today we will discuss another challenge of hippocampus. So, in order to introduce the topic, let me tell you a small story for a couple of minutes that will kind of give you an idea how significant hippocampus is and why hippocampal cell culture is one of the very potential tool to understand several diseases and disorders involving the central nervous system. So, there was one author called late Ira B. Black, he is no more. So, he wrote a book once, The Death of Enoch Wallace. So, this is one interesting story which was uh, which revolved around one of the bankers in Manhattan, New York. So, this gentleman was very meticulous about his lifestyle like you know perfectly dressed and a very high profile banker. So, one fine morning he wake up and all of a sudden for a fragment of moment or fraction of a second, he forgot that where is the restroom in his own house. He thought maybe he is kind of you know just lost in it, just maybe tired, he has a lot of assignments to take care of. And on that very day, his wife observed something very unusual. The person who always is to dress up so neatly about the tie and everything like in a picture perfect gentleman, his dressing was kind of bit off, which is not the type of person he is like not that meticulous perfect. So, that day of course, Enoch Wallace went to his office, went to his bank and while he was coming back, he started mistaking the exact location of his own alley or the street. Again, he ignored it thinking that it is just because he is very tired and so on and so forth. But as days passes by, these uh, symptoms started to grow further and then his wife took him to psychiatrist and there he was detected that he is in the very initial stages of Alzheimer's. So, what is Alzheimer's? And then I will recommend you please uh, buy this book online read through it, the death of Enoch Wallace, but that is not the topic what I am going to discuss. This is just to give you a flair that uh, where the technologies what we have discussed for last uh, 40 classes with you people could really matter in someone else's life to make tomorrow much more beautiful. So, Alzheimer's is a disease which uh, initiates in the hippocampal region. The hippocampal neuron started to die for an unknown reason. Of course, there are several theories up to it, but the real cause nobody knows. What essentially happens is that, if you remember when we talk about the neuronal structure. So, let me come to the slide that will help you to understand, recollect. So, most of these neurons in the hippocampus are pyramidal neurons like this. Okay. This is the axon 
and these are the processes. Okay. And here you have the nucleus, these are the dendritic trees. Now, the interesting part is this, during Alzheimer's what happens is, this axonal tube, if I magnify this axonal tube, this axonal tube becomes started to see blockages like this. So, the real movement of the cargo, cargo in a normal condition, the real movement of the cargo is like this. It goes like this, anterograde and retrograde and the cargoes move. You, you physically can see the cargo which is the neurotransmitters and other organelle like mitochondria, they move back and forth. Okay? But whereas, in the case of Alzheimer's, what you observe that there are blockages kind of, kind of piling up as if on the highway you see lot of debris getting accumulated. And once the debris started getting accumulated, the signal transfer, the flow of signal from here all the way to that end is kind of blocked. And automatically, this neuron cannot transmit signal to the next one. So, this signal transfer kind of get blocked and eventually the individual neurons started to you know die out. And what you are left behind is, you will see the neurons like this, and there are a lot of bodies kind of in a vacuum like bodies started to appear. So, even at this stage, much at this stage also, if you stain the cell with live dead assay, you will see these cells are partly live, but then in due course they die. So, this is at least this is from my personal observation I have seen whenever I have tried to culture the cells from Alzheimer's patients. Now, coming back to the story of Enoch Wallace, there are couple of things which were strange which happened. The first thing was he was losing the track of space, his navigational problems. Okay. So, what does that mean? So, having said this, I will bring you to this part where I wish that you put some specific attention, the spatial navigation or a spatial memory of the individual is compromised in hippocampus or for the individual as a matter of fact. Apart from it, there are long term episodic memories which are getting compromised. So, how that happens, we have no idea. Now, if you go back and recollect the structure of hippocampus, so if you remember that while we talk about the dissection, I told you that it is something like a structure like this and it is a three dimensional structure, it is not a two dimensional structure the way I am drawing it. So, if you want to introduce a three dimensional map to it, it will be something like this. Okay. So, now on that three dimensional structure, there are pathways C A 1, C A 2, C A 3, C A 4, okay. C A 1, C A 2, C A 3, C A 4 and then out here you have dented gyrus. So, if you want to visualize this structure, just imagine you are putting thin pillows one after another, okay. pillow 1, pillow 2, pillow 3, pillow 4 likewise. So, pillow 1 is kind of say C A 1 region, C A 2 region, pillow 2, C A 3 is the third pillow, C A 4 is the fourth pillow and underneath you have a pillow like this or a cushion like this which is the dented gyrus. And the interesting part about this three dimensional structure is that between different layers, you have crosstalk happening. So, the crosstalk may happen between say C A 1 to dented gyrus, say C A 2 to C A 1, C A 1 to both C A 2 as well as C A 1. Similarly, C A 4 may have a talk with dented gyrus as well as C A 3, as well as with C A 2, as well as with C A 1. So, now by 
any means, by any in vivo means, it is an extremely challenging task to figure out what are the possible computation which are happening at this level. Because the reason being, if you want to implant an electrode like this, it will, it will be like way bigger electrode like this, something will come like this and you are implanting, positioning in vivo animal. So, what will happen? The electrode may touch both CA1A and CA2 region or may even penetrate further and really to make out something what is happening is extremely challenging because you have to realize that there are billions of neurons which are making these pathways. Really the computational complexity is way more than the best of the best hardware computer ever built by man. In the face of the best computer, a hippocampus as a person can mock at it, because this level of computation is something unimaginable. And still that is the reason why brain is the final frontier of mankind to understand who are we, because, because the day you lose it, the day you lose that hippocampal part for x, y, z reason, you do not know who you are because you forget it. So, having laid this foundation stone, these two lectures will be dedicated to those modern technologies which may someday change the story of mankind. We may be able to understand who we are and why we suffer from a disease and how we can, how we can revert it back. That is exceptionally critical. So, read with you, this is what hippocampus is all about. A mammalian hippocampus plays an important role in the formation of long term episodic memories. As I told you, spatial navigation and even if you forget, remember the story of Enoch Wallace death of Enoch Wallace okay, by Ira B. Black, a story which will help you to get an inspiration. Yet, this is the important part what you have to highlight, encoding in the subregions of different elements of memory formation. Subregions means from layer 1 to layer 2 likewise remains poorly understood. A better understanding of connectivity between different subregions, as I mentioned you the subregions CA1, CA2, CA3, CA4, dentate gyrus could aid in novel computer design. This is where the computer scientists are so keen to understand it. Modern world computer science of software or hardware is a struggling to understand brain, because that is where lies the catch. Improve brain computer interface and new approaches to restoring the damaged brain. And the paper what I am going to discuss with you is the title here, Narrow Micro Tunnel Technology for the Isolation and Precise Identification of Axonal Communication Among Distinct hippocampal subregions. I will give you the details of the paper. It was from Greg Brewer and moving on to the micro tunnel technology. So, micro tunnel technology. So, we will come to this just for your understanding sake. So, let me go a little back. So, say for example, I have a way to isolate CA1 neurons and I have a way to isolate CA2 neurons and if I could plate them in a well and I can plate this in a well okay, and I could place electrodes in between like this and say for example, there are several neurons here and I make channels like this, tiny micro channels microchannels thickness should be good enough, so that it only allows one axon from here. So, for example, if this is a neuron, one axon to travel along this and crosstalk 
with a neuron which is sitting in the C A 2 region similarly like this. Okay. If I could really create a situation, so what will happen in that situation? I already have the electrode underneath it. So, if I give a stimulation out here, say for example, I could identify this neuron, I give an a stimulation, I should be able to record the current out here or if I give a stimulation here or I give a full fledged field stimulation, I should be able to measure the current at individual level. Why this is important? If say for example, I do not have a channel for the neuron axon to move through. So, we will we'll come to this. So, this is what we are talking about the micro channels. What does that signifies and what are the problems? Say for example, there are no tunnels. Say for example, out here you have neurons moving like this, neuron moving like this, neuron moving like this, cross talking like this and here you have the receiving neurons. Okay. So, let us just kind of you know create a partition. So, what will happen when you will put an electrode here? At the same time, you will be rec getting recording from say neuron 1, neuron 2, neuron 3. And if you start to get recording like that, say for example, this one is sending a signal with a slight delay and next one is coming with further delay and the third one has just passed by. So, there will be destructive interference, there are always possibilities. So, what does that mean? Say for example, you have constructive interference. So, this is one wave moving, this is another wave moving. Okay. If these two waves are at the same phase, there will be an addition and what you will observe is something like this, which is perfectly fine. But say for example, there is a situation like this, one wave moving like this and the other wave is coming something like this. So, here you have the crest and here you have the trough of the another wave. So, you have a crest of one and the trough of the another one. So, what will happen depending on the amplitude there will be a reduction in the complete in the final amplitude. So, what will happen in that process that you will be losing some of the actual signal which is flowing through one of the paths. So, for example, something like this. So, here what is happening? Say for example, this is a signal you are trying to measure. Okay. Now, the, here there are two signals which are coming through. So, one signal is out here, the second signal is out here and because of the two signals coming at a very close in phase, say for example, one signal moving, the other signal followed by that, let me put on the color is moving like this. So, there is a possibility depending on whether in what stage these signals are, there will be a possibility of a destructive interference taking place. So, part of the signal will be kind of you know pulled down by the previous signal or the succeeding signal. So, that is where the problem is whenever you have a random electrode and there are things which are moving like this, if these are the axon you assume and you wanted to measure a signal. So, you do not know whether neuron 1, neuron 2, neuron 3, neuron 4 are the signals coming say n 1 moves, peak moves like this followed by n 2, followed by n 3, followed by n 4. How much differences are there? And if there are not, if there are significant difference you will not lose, but if they are almost coming like this first signal followed by a signal like this, a signal like this. So, there will be a whole lot of addition and subtraction and you would not be able to figure out what is the actual signal moving through a single axon. So, in that process say for example, I wanted to understand the connectivity of between point A and point B, I would not be able to really get the actual amount of signal which is moving from point neuron 1 to neuron B or neuron A to neuron B at a particular given time, because there will be other neurons in the surrounding which will be will be colluding the signal and that may not give me the information what I need it. But at the level of the brain where the computation is taking place, these computations are 
extremely, extremely specific and especially the problem becomes much more complex. In the brain, this is not a problem. Why it is not a problem? Inside the brain is because inside the brain, these neurons are having, they do not lose the signal because inside the brain, they are myelinated. They are myelination, so they do not lose the signal. But when we are culturing them outside into the system, they are not really myelinated unless you really myelinate all of them and then you can get recordings. That is not a problem. But when you are culturing them outside, they are non-myelinated stuff and there is always a possibility or rather it happens as, as the data itself shows, there will be interference of signals and the, how to remove that interference of signal. Now, coming back where I was, microtunnel technology. So, microtunnel that can approach a single axon resolution and identification of connectivity between subregions would clarify the information transmission between two subregions. What does that mean? That is out here. So, between these, say for example, there is a neuron sitting here and it is cross talking with a neuron at dentor gyrus. So, I should be able to see what is the actual signal which is coming from a single neuron, not from a population of neurons, because there are populations which may come from here, the population coming from here and I would not be able to distinguish whether it is coming from CA1, CA2, CA3, CA4. So, I need it or even within CA1, is it coming from another region of CA1? What is that specific information coming? Because this whole structure, this whole structure is a computer and it has several nodes and bits and pieces and each part is interacting with another part at a particular frequency domain and how to figure out that. Because I have not made this computer, right? This has been made by nature. So, now I am trying to discover what all different computation this particular computer is doing. So, it becomes way more challenging and second, microtunnel technology provides highly restrictive path by connecting axons between different sub networks. Now, coming back, the first work in this area was started by a guy called Campenot and which we call as Campenot Chambers, Campenot Chambers and the Campenot Chamber looks something like this. This is a chamber where you have these neurons you can place here and there is a partition and there are small scratch channels through which the neuron is moving here. And this was done in a very crude way. This was back in 1970s, 65, 70s, this kind of studies were done in it's called Campenot chambers. Followed by Campenot chambers, where people were trying to study the information transform information transfer along a single axon came the PDMS device where you are making two chambers using PDMS poly <coughs> dithoxy dimethoxy silane okay so basically a silane so you are making two and you are making this micro grooves for axon passage and this you can do on a simple glass cover slips followed by a very very high advanced technique which is essentially the direct neural network using low melting agar etching technique. But the problem with these kind of techniques are, I personally have used these techniques I realize when you are trying to study a single neuron, the neuronal survival becomes a question because a neuron in isolation cannot survive, it needs a population. But for a very, very chronic study, yes you can, but it comes with its own set of problems. But what we will be dealing here is mostly this part and integration with microelectrode arrays okay and the reference is given those of you are interested so the problem statement let's put it across tunnel width have not been studied systematically as the width of the, this part is exceptionally important as the width of the tunnel decreases resistance increases which causes an increase in the spike amplitude the tunnel electrode construct allows simultaneously recording with micron spatial and microsecond temporal resolution from a network of axon communicating between two subregions. Thus, the flow of information between subregions through the microtunnel tunnel could enable the acquisition of 
precise knowledge of the essential output from one region as the input to the next. What does this, this mean? This is a big statement out there. Now, let us explain this using a diagram that will be a better idea instead of you know. So, now say for example, these are four different wells. Say I say this is say C A 1 region neuron I put, I say this is C A 2 region I put, I say this is C A 3 region I put, this is I say D G or dented gyrus I put, fine. I have a pool of neurons out here of different regions, region A, whichever way you want to name it. Now, these are the axons, these are the guided axon moving. Okay. Now, these axons and underneath it, you are having the thin film electrodes, these are the electrodes which are forming. Now, what I have to do is that I have to separate these axons, so that they do not cross each other. Like I do not want from here, the axons are crisscrossing like this. So, what I wanted to achieve is axons are moving like this. You are pretty much guiding the network to move like this and ensuring and ensuring since these axons are non myelinated, ensuring that this is separated from the next one, that this one is separated. So, this pink lines are showing the separation, how I can separate and yet ensure that the signal is moving and underneath as I have already shown, you have the electrodes to do the measurements which are already embedded the surface electrodes. Now, how you can do this is the next picture. So, try to visualize in the picture that will be easy. So, here is the catch, here you are having the electrodes, okay. and this is how you create the micro tunnel and this diameter is what we are talking about repeatedly that is what matters. What will be that diameter? Could will be 2.5 micron, will it be 5 micron or it will be 10 micron. It has been observed. So, now we will be talking about the paper what we wanted to describe in this segment is narrow micro tunnel technology for the isolation and precise identification of axonal communication among distinct hippocampal subregions. So, now this is the whole design what we are talking about out here. This is how the micro tunnels look like and these are the axon processes which are moving through. Now, if you look at, so this is the actual design and this is the actual picture of say this is region 1, this is region 2 and this is where the axons are moving whichever direction you wanted to put it that is up to you and I will show you some of the result to close in this class. So, these are 2.5 micron separation between the different axons. Okay. So, these micro tunnels are 2.5 micron, these micro tunnels are 5 micron, in these micro tunnels are 10 micron and if you see the micro electrode array recording, this is in front of you. the amount of spikes what you are obtaining, the first set of spikes and we will come later about it that what does that mean. Okay. So, this is what you are getting at a 10 micron, this is the number of spikes per electrode you are getting, but what is important for you to understand the amplitude of the spike, the average amplitude of the spike. If you look at here your spike number is less, right? but look at the amplitude, what is the amplitude are we talking about? This is 18 micro volt, whereas if you averaged it out somewhere here, this will be around 30 and if you average this out, it will be around 20. What does that mean and how this micro tunnel technology matters so much? We will talk further on this and will realize that how the in vitro techniques can make a difference. Thank you.